Hi, I'm Amy Eisenstein, and today I'm excited to bring you examples of good fundraising. Not good fundraising, great fundraising. So fundraising can be hard, so whenever I see examples of good fundraising, I tuck them away to save and share with you later, and here's some that I saw actually just this week. So the first one is a donate page for NJCDC, and they are pointing out that recurring donations are the best way to give steady support. Hooray, I love this. Bring my attention right to donation frequency and that they are looking for recurring donations and that that's the best way to give steady support. I love that language. It's interesting, they have one time, monthly, quarterly, and annual buttons. And it's your choice how frequently you wanna give. Now, of course, we want people to pick monthly. I actually might move that to the front of the line and highlight that one and put one time last. Actually, one time is the least, the one that I want people to pick least. I want them to pick monthly, quarterly, or annual because those are recurring donations. Um, even annual is better than one time because it means you can charge their credit card once a year. Great example. Another one, of course, is this website. It's a different person's website. Highest priority needs they put under designation. That's what pops up first. Now, if you click the arrows, there are a few other things that you can choose from, but they've controlled it well. They only list things that they really want you to give to. But the first one is highest priority needs. And as a donor, that's what I want to give to. So that's really smart language. This is an email I got this week. It says, help communities of color through the pandemic. Yes, I want to do that. It caught my attention. Um, it tells me what's going on, what they need from me. Here's the email inside. It says, we write to you in the throes of COVID-19 pandemic, which is claiming the lives of black and other people of color um, at disproportionate rates, right? So it got my attention. Then it tells me um, down here, actually, uh, to take action here. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. And even more importantly, they need my help to make this happen. I love this language, a great email, and they're fundraising for a really important cause. It's timely, it's important. It's not food and it's not healthcare, but I know that they need my help. All right, so here's another example. It's an out of office email that I got this week. And I wanna tell you that I have gotten hundreds, probably thousands of out of office emails in the last few weeks. And this is the only one that I've seen with a donation button. And I don't know if you call it a donation button, but they give you the website and ask or even hint at a donation. I'm telling you, I've gotten thousands of emails, out of office emails from people. And this is the only one that I noticed them asking for a donation on. So is it the best example? I have to tell you, it's the only example. So um, let's see if you can do better than that. All right, so let me wrap up with five reasons to ask because I think that there's still this feeling out there among board members, among staff members, among executive directors, uh, that they just feel like it's not a good time to ask. And I know a lot of you are asking, so if you are, hooray, keep doing what you're doing, keep doing your thing. But in case you're working with anybody who's not sure or on the fence or hesitant about asking, my number one reason, you won't raise money if you don't ask. It's plain and simple. So if your organization needs money right now, you gotta get that out there and ask. Number two, people actually may have more money right now. So there's this big excuse that, you know, people don't have money and times are tough. Okay, the stock market's been up and down and up and down, but if people still have their jobs and their regular paycheck, they're not spending as much money as they used to. They're not going out to restaurants nearly as much or at all. They're not going out to bars or to the theater. They're not going to shopping malls. And so people actually may have increased cash flow or cash in the bank right now. And they would be happy to use it in constructive, productive ways if you only asked. So 
That brings me to reason number three, people are desperate to help. People are stuck at home. They don't know what to do. They're feeling helpless and they are seeing all this information on the news and they would feel great if they could just help. So you give them a reason to help and a reason to feel good and give meaning and bring joy to their life because they've done something productive and important. Okay, reason number four, you are being negligent if you don't ask. Let me tell you, it is that plain and simple. If you have a cause, a community, a mission that needs support and needs to continue after this crisis ends or through the crisis, if you're not asking, you're being negligent. And I have to tell you that for years, I've been working with development directors who are nervous about asking and um, hesitant to ask, and now's your time to shine. It's now or never. It's time to ask. Get out there and start asking. And five, your nonprofit needs funding. I don't care what your mission is. If you have a, had a reason to exist before the pandemic, my guess is that you'll still have a reason to exist during and after the pandemic, and you need funds now. So it's time to ask. Um, there's no more excuses get out there and ask. All right, that's it for this week. Thanks, everybody.